Hey, kids, are you ready? I'm sorry. Ready for what? I can't hear you. Because I'm ready. What, what are we getting ready for? We're getting ready to get your paint on. I'm ready. Hey, kids, are you ready? Oh, that's oh not there's my noise. Is. Oh, you're going to get that double going. Because <laughs> I'm ready. What, what are we getting oh, yeah. We got noise. Get your paint on. Good morning, everybody. It's get your pain on. Come on, yeah. everybody. Let's go. get your pain on. Let's pretend we know what we're doing. Here we go. Professionals. It's Thursday morning. Get your pain on. I'm your host, Mr. Dallas Kemp. And with me today, we got the ambassador of awesome, Mr. John Schwankels. Oh, hello. Running that second microphone. And behind the master control, the man that needs no introduction because of his conduction and his function, Tony Konachek. Good morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Born ready. That was impressive. He just kept it right on the rail. I rail everything. <laughs> just, just take a joke. <laughs> just go and go and go until it's beaten like a horse that it is. So what, what, what are you painting, Dallas? What, what is, who is that guy? Stick it so rare I can see where the jockey was hitting it. <laughs> what are you painting, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I, what do we got on the paint table today? I've got the uh, War Machine Weekend Convention Exclusive Pig Barrel Rider. He is a replacement for North Ken Raider, and he's super adorable and super cute. What, what's that on kind of the lower front of the barrel there? That is one poor, unfortunate <laughs> little well that is just... I didn't, I didn't see that when you brought it in this morning. That's awesome. That poor whelp was I, in the wrong Is place. that a whelp pancake? Whelp cakes. Oh. Agatha's got it right. Wow! This is yeah. I th I think this is I think this is my favorite sculpt of the season so far. The uh, yeah, I really like this little guy. He's super adorable. Everybody... Like there's there's mini crate models that are that are dope. Like I love the swamp siren and a wolf, but this guy's just just got something going. He's just cool. He's super adorable. Uh, this Ed, this is a. Uh... Ed Burrell asked what base size it is. It is a forty millimeter base. This does replace a. Or it can be used as a trooper in your uh, North Ken Raiders unit. I believe that's it. Yeah, I believe that's what he does. That is correct, sir. Yeah. So he will be available, of course, at War Machine Weekend uh -huh. and on the online store, store.privateerpress.com, uh -huh. during the convention. Like all of our con exclusives. Convention exclusive. And now this is this is your pig barrel rider, correct? Uh, this is mine, yeah. yeah. So this is, I'm painting him up in my color of my steel creel. If anybody's been seeing those on the Facebook post I've been making about the the steel creel. So for those who aren't aware, not this weekend, but next weekend is War Machine Weekend in St. Louis. It is the most War Machines of all weekends. Where you can see a bunch of the staff there, but most importantly... Dallas Kemp. I will be there. Tony's going to be there. Brendan's going to be there. And Doug Hamilton. Doug Hamilton's going to be Hams. there. Uh, who else is going to be there? JR's going to be there. Brent's going to be there. I'm trying to remember who's all going to be there. Will Pagani, because he's a pretty man. Makes a mean brisket, I hear. Man. I was supposed to find out if that was true or not this last weekend, but yeah, I didn't get to go. I, I, I keep, uh, he keeps dodging me. I asked him to bring me in a bite. I'm going to tell you right now, that brisket was amazing. I'm going to tell you right now, we made a swine apple, mm -hmm. and that thing was amazing. It was just a bacon wrapped around a pineapple stuffed with jalapeno and cream cheese. Ugh. Oh, yeah. So one of the other reasons that, that Tony's going to be there is because we're going to be live streaming from War Machine Weekend yeah. all weekend. Or a day. Or a day. What, what kind day. of stuff are we going to be streaming? We are going to be streaming the uh, champion section of uh, Iron Gauntlet qualifiers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we will also be streaming the War Machine Weekend Invitational uh, finals. 
at least two of the rounds, I believe. And then um, we're also going to have a couple of uh, just staff exhibition games, staff versus More. players, and one of which will be Dallas Kemp playing a Company of Iron game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With you know your what? steel creel. Uh, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take both my Steel Krill and my Filthy Five, and I will totally just let my opponent decide what I play. Like, I might even have a couple options of, like, uh, some alternate models to swap in and out if I can get them done in time. Prerequisite marketing speed. Company of Iron comes out October 25th. Check it out at your local game store or store.privateerpress.com. Company of Iron, you play what you want. Company of Iron. It disturbs me how well I do that voice. <laughs> Just pull it right out of the bag. Whoosh, boom. I got Pan's little little toesy toes. I noticed Josh Cologne is is in the chat. He's he's not on the stream this weekend, but I assure you he is still working on finishing up those uh sanguine salvation. Is that what we went with? I think that's his official yeah, I think that's what he decided was his official name of his little company of armed force. It was looking sanguine pretty good. Sanguine salvation. Which sounds dope. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um and I know he's still working on it. He told me the other day uh, that he was working on them at home and is excited to get them all painted up. And he was excited that he feels like he learned a bunch of new trips and tricks. And Oh, dude, it was crazy. Like, like just watching him literally get better, like, each time. Mm -hmm. Like, it was insane. Like, he was already a decent painter. And just the couple of helpful hints here and there and just... Shazam! That's all it is, man. It's just finding out those tips and tricks. Well, next time we have Josh in on the stream, just kind of hanging out and talking with us, we should have him bring back his finished force and have yeah. him take a look at uh, take a look at each model, how they look and how they well, uh, all came out. What'll end up happening before that, which is perfect for showing those off, is shortly after we get back from War Machine Weekend, because there will be a streaming hiatus until we get to War Machine mm -hmm. Weekend, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, and then a little bit until we get after we get back, just because of shipping and all that other kind of good stuff. Equipment got to go where equipment mm -hmm. gotta go. got to go. However, once we have all that stuff back in studio, our first weekly rumble will be Josh Cologne and his Sanguine Salvation versus Mr. Dallas Kemp and either his Filthy Five or his Steel Creel. One of the two. So watch for an announcement on exactly which date that'll be, but it'll probably be a week after War Machine after again. War Machine not the, again. Not the one right after, but the one right after that. Man, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. So stoked. And just to remind people, the War Machine weekend streaming We'll be on twitch.tv slash private. Yeah, Press. yeah, we don't. We, we stream a, from War Machine Weekend on Twitch, not Facebook. And there's a bunch. Of, yeah, and that's just the weekend. Well, that's not entirely right. untrue. Like, well, yeah, you'll do special There'll be Facebook stuff. live streaming because uh, we'll, be, we'll be hitting up the Hobby Lounge mm -hmm. uh, with Brendan. Brendan will be painting in the Hobby Lounge. Um, I have a class in the Hobby Lounge where I'm going to do another uh, one hour speed paint on another Private Press bust. Oh, yeah. Um, so all that stuff will be streamed. So there's going to be a ton of uh, chances to see some really cool stuff coming out of War Machine. And uh, I know there's a couple of a couple of little projects being worked on around the around the office for mm -hmm, War Machine mm -hmm, weekend. Mm -hmm. There, there's a pretty big boy down on uh, down on Brendan's desk that I'm excited to share with people tomorrow. Oh, it's a there's a beautiful baby boy. So, once again, just a fresh reminder, War Machine Weekend, not this coming weekend, but the next weekend, the weekend of November 5th, we will be streaming from twitch.tv slash privateerpress. Some people have asked, well, why not keep it all on Facebook Live? And that's really because of the stability of the platform. Like, basically, every once in a while, Facebook streams can get disconnected and kick you, and Twitch is a little bit more stable for those longer-running streams. All right. And Basically. Joffrey, this is the Pig Barrel Rider. He has a replacement for one of your Northkin Raiders. And he's super adorable. All right, so what I've done here is I've got him zenithal primed as everybody can see. Um, let's talk about painting a little bit since I'm going to be putting some uh, colors on here. Um, oh, there's something in me. So what I've done is I got the zenithal priming. This isn't really sketch blare. Um, I'm, I'm just using it. It, it looks really good on the camera. It helps you see stuff. So two really good questions. First one, Joffrey, is that the uh, 
Pig Barrel Writer will be available at War Machine Weekend or on store.privateerpress.com while the convention is going on, which is, again, the weekend of November 5th. And then Todd has a question that says, do you guys sell wet pallets? Do you use one professionally? If not, why? We do sell wet pallets. You can get that at the store or at a convention or even at your local hobby or local game store. And yes, uh, when it's appropriate, I do use a wet pallet. And there's actually a really cool video we did with Brendan that shows just how just to, how use, to use the wet palette. wet palette on youtube.com slash privateer press prime. So I got this guy, I got the base coat of, I mixed moldy ochre and rucksack tan together for a base coat. And now I'm going to put on some shade with a mix of bloodstone and battle dress green. Now, I've seen this blend on, um, on some of your other steel creel dudes and i love this flesh tone for trolls yeah it works really good where did you pull this from uh out of my noggin just playing around and yeah sweet just goofing off and wanting to try something new wanting to do something something not blue trolls and so i was just like well what's the opposite of blue trolls yellow trolls and then I just started mixing up some colors and see what I was going to get out of it. And Moldy Ochre is one of the uh, one of the newer paints out of the Grimkin set, yeah? No, that's Mediocre. Oh, okay. I always get those two swapped. <clears throat> you could probably, oh, you could use some Mediocre in this recipe if you wanted to. You could uh, um, put it as a secondary shade between or transitional shade between this color and the uh, base color because it would transition between there. It'd make them a little more orange. Yeah. Uh, Joffrey, the shade is a mix of battle dress green and uh, bloodstone. Dallas, how many variations on troll skin have you tried? Oh, I mean, just over the course of all your painting. Or course of all my painting? Yeah. Uh, does it, including albino? Yeah. Probably six. Probably something like that. Have any of them not worked out? Or have you been able to make them all look no. look convincing? I mean, I mean, that's the cool thing about painting. There's not really wrong. Nothing really looks wrong. Like, if you want to do whatever color trolls, it's, you know, just put the right colors in the... You know, it's just choosing the right colors for the shadows and the highlights and stuff like that. But I, th I think you can make any color look convincing. Green trolls, purple trolls, orange trolls, pink trolls, white trolls. Like, not albino, but actually, like, uh, two brush muffled and teeth clanking. Sorry, turn down the volume. <laughs> It's, it's just some, how he's got to do yeah, it. Yeah, some that brush goes in and out of the mouth. Yeah, man, that's uh, just, it, that's it, how it's the rolls. microphone on the way out. I'll do my best. It's just the way it works. Gotta use my mouth. I'm trying to go really fast. Dallas, you could probably pull that mic away from your mouth a little bit if it helps. Right. How's that? How's that, everybody? There we go. Little shadow, really fast shadows. Yeah, this was just playing around. I've never mixed bloodstone and uh, bow dress green together before, and I was just looking for a good color uh, to shade my guys. I knew I wanted it to be warm, but I knew I wanted some green in there, so I messed around with uh, blood trucker brown and. Messed around with scorn red, and I finally landed on bloodstone, and added the uh, added the bow dress green. It just just happened to work good. So here we is. There we were, standing on the edge of forever. So what what is the story behind the steel creel? They are my, I'm, I'm imagining them as like, so I'm imagining the steel krill as like this group of scavenging nomadic 
trolls who have found a wrecked colossal and have turned it into their uh, village slash shrine. Okay, that's cool. And I'm actually considering building... Scrap trolls. Scrap trolls, yes. And I'm actually considering building a wreck colossal village for them because I just think it'd be a really fun little project. Which, which, uh, which factions colossals do you think they have the most of? <laughs> They've just started collecting colossals. Mm -hmm. uh, like, did they find a specific battleground and that's where most of these came from? Or Yeah, I think that that's kind of where I'm going with this. I'm not, like, I haven't really fleshed out the full idea. But, like, I'm imagining, like, a big conquest, right? Yeah. Because yeah. conquest Kador has that just, nice, mm -hmm. big, It'll thick, mm -hmm. heavy, square, blocky shapes, right? And you could have these nice gantries and planks and stuff like that going up to it and then have, like, another tower built off of that mm -hmm. and then maybe some tents coming off there and, like, have this really cool shrine slash... Um, Kador, we build cozy colossals you could live in. That's right. Uh, Nevin's got a pretty good question. He says, I've seen a few different videos where you work on common skin tones, but I can't find them that quickly. What do you usually mix with Midland flesh for doing shades on Signarins, like under eyebrows and cheekbones? I seem to remember it was something with some green, like Battle Dress Green or Troll Blood Highlight. Uh, for like Signar Signarin skin tones, mm -hmm. uh, that first shade is usually... <laughs> A uh, battle dress green uh, mixed into Midland flesh, mm -hmm. and then Midland flesh mixed with scorn red, and glaze that over top of that, and then mix battle dress green and scorn red together, and do like the deep deep shadows. So he wasn't very far off at all. No, he was really really close. Why uh, why put in the green and the red? For Signar or for for Midland Flash? No, for, for, for skin tones. For skin, like if you just look at skin tone, it, like you need red because you need warmth. Um, warmth indicates life, uh, makes a creature look more living, um, and green turns red into brown. And if you look at skin tones, mm -hmm. There's a lot of green in skin tones, so it just makes it look more alive because of nature. Is that a good answer? That's good. That's the one good I was enough. looking for. I was again, I was pretending to not know so that I nature. Could Blair get was your saying explanation. It basically, as you were, that it says makes it look more natural. Yeah, it's just it's just realism. Skin it just adds realism. Skin tones are, are you know, <clears throat> the, on the surface they look kind of that peachy pink, but uh, they're actually pretty complex. They got a nice. Uh, Rainbow of colors happening. And yeah, every skin tone does. And there's no wrong skin tone. Like all skin tones have unique properties, and they're all they all have their own unique individual characteristics that make them interesting. So you can really play with them, and by painting them, you can you can be like, well, I'm just going to add this color in it, and it, you can actually still make it look, you know, like a real skin tone. So. There's my answer. There's no wrong skin tone. Play around and experiment and see what you can come up with. I think I got a little hair on his head. I'll have to dig that out a little bit later. This lady. A little, little brush hair went after him. Yeah, a little brush hair got in there. A little brush hair got in there. <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't do all Blair, I don't do all that veins and blood cell. Oh, in a in a twenty eight millimeter paint job, but definitely in like a bust. Um, when I paint like the Nemo, but when I painted the Nemo bust, I definitely oh, so put good. like some uh, uh, liver spots and age spots on him and um, broken blood vessels in the nose because you can really get in there and just accentuate all that kind of detail. Um, much harder to do at 28 millimeter. It doesn't really matter at 28 millimeter. You just kind of let let your little dudes be little dudes. They're tiny. 
What would I use for Idrian's? Gage asked me. What would I use for Idrian's? I would use Idrian Flesh. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't pedantic at all. <laughs> and then I would shade with either some Umbral Umber mixed into the Idrian Flesh, or maybe some, if you wanted to go a little cooler, you could use Battlefield Brown mixed with Scorn Red. And then go down to um, Umber Lumber, but that's where I would look at. I would look at those, and then to bring it up, I would add Midland Flesh to Idrian Flesh to create the highlight, because um, you want the the highlight on the Idrians to come up to like um, that more Caucasian pinky um, color. Let's shadow this guy. You know what? That's it. That's a, that. Well, that's not. That's not, that's not it, it. But these got, this is guy's quick and dirty. This is tabletop. I'm just rocking this dude. Are you going to be getting to that barrel today? I might. All right. I might just skip everything and do the barrel. So what I've been doing with this guy is, or with uh, my Krill Steel, Steel Krill, is after I put on the base coat and then the shade coat, as I go through and I put a little bit of cold black, very, very thin. I'm going to show you. Is that on the screen? It's on the screen. See how thin that is? And I'm just going to put that in like the eye sockets. And like in his brow. So the deepest, deepest shadow. Yeah. And I'm just putting that little bit of blue in there. Mm -hmm. Blend that away. Make that. And then like maybe up underneath his arm here. Put some of that in there. Give it a little blend. And don't forget, folks, you can find the whole selection of Formula P3 paints at either your local game store or at store.privateerpress.com. Store at privateerpress.com. That's where you buy your paints.com. <laughs> All the paints you need.com. That's where the paints live. <laughs> No, I no. hope Brent is listening that right now amazing. and he's writing down all of these and securing them. Right. So, Alex, you are not the only guy to ask which North Ken model this is. And this is the Pig Barrel Rider. He is the War Machine Weekend exclusive. So you can get him at the show or mm -hmm. at the web store. Mm -hmm. um, and he is a replacement for a North Ken Raider. Yeah, it goes right into your North Korea unit. Can you get it on the store at any time or only during the show? Just during War Machine, during weekend. War Machine weekend. And we might we might have some at other shows, but sure. generally just during that. And War Machine Weekend is not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. That's a weird place to put a shadow. Whatever. You do what you want. It's Company of Iron. That's right. I don't play by no rules. I'm a loose cannon. Six like, Dallas, get in here. I'm like, what's up, chief? He's like, that's it, Dallas. This is your last time. You've been warned. I'm like, but chief, I was so close to finishing that paint job. And he's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> You're a loose cannon, Kemp. Turn in your brush. That's right. Turn in your brush. And I'm like, chief. You give me 48 hours. He's like, that's it. I'm protecting you for 48 hours. But after that, there's no promise for this. And I'm like, I'll get it done. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I was I was on board. We were going on that yeah, journey. We were, we, were, we were with you. We were, in, we were in the squad car with you. I think we were handcuffed in the back. But we were there. So Steve asks, have you ever thought of doing a series where you paint the army theme only using the paints in their theme box? That would be literally impossible. Right, because you need you need a couple of fillers here. And you there, need some fillers. I mean, there's no white and black in those, and you need white and black. Yeah, yeah. So they're basically all of those those themed paint sets are awesome for bringing those faction colors into your existing collection or as a supplement to some of the stuff that you've already got. So, for example, one of the first Oops. ones I usually actually point people at is the Iron Kingdom's colors set. Yeah, the Iron Kingdom's set. Because sets that's got a lot of the base colors you'll use for everything. And then grab any of the factions of your choice and you're pretty good to go. You might only need one or two colors depending on what you're doing. Yeah, the faction sets are designed as like a 
an intro, like a like a like a get your started. You know, you just bought your battle box. Here's your six colors. You can lay some base coats down and get going, right? Mm -hmm. But once you start wanting to put in some shadows and some highlights, you got to expand it out and you want to start growing your collection. And once you start wanting to work with new techniques and new styles, you want to expand it out and start growing. But it's definitely like the premier place to start your P3 paint collection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super, super good for that. So I just put a little heart fire on his little noggin quills. And now I'm taking a little Kator Red, and I just mix some of that Kator Red and some of my shade color, and I'm going to paint his tongue that color. You got to spin that to camera when you're done. Yeah, I will. Sorry, it's got to yeah, get yeah, the side. Yeah, the side's like awkward angle. I'm, I am, I am so happy about this model. <laughs> little pig barrel rider. I wanted to do a conversion on him last night because uh, all my steel crew has these like hex bolts and stuff on them and mm -hmm. like they're all scrap uh scrap i mean they're scrappers right yeah. um and i want to do i wanted to do a little conversion on him but the the little hex bolts i have were a little too big i was going to put one in his tongue like his little tongue was should have had like a little casket pierced. peeking out of the barrel too could have put a little casket putting in the barrel that'd been pretty good but i didn't do it I'm just going to paint my little guy. Whatever. Do you remember how many are in a unit of Northkin Raiders? Ten. Ten? Yeah. So in theory, I could go buy ten of these and replace yep. all of them. Because I might have to. Because I kind of like this dude too much. <laughs> that or he, you know, like, there's something to him being the one special guy on the on the squad. He is, yeah. Steve. It, Steve's it, always got to make an entrance. There's little Steve. Dave, what are you doing? Let's get some, bro. It's like uh, Steve is the Leroy Jenkins of North Kent Raiders, <laughs> right? <laughs> North King Raiders. I don't know why he's Stevie Hexbolt now. Stevie Hexbolt. Uh, Dane Dallas, if you could only paint in shades of one color for the rest of the time, what? Co uh, the color of done. Um, <laughs> we're gonna play that song in the key of done sir that's right uh one um man tony you would probably that's a good question for you too actually one well, okay uh you, you get one color for, for the rest of your life you can only paint in shades of that color shades of one color one color um well, I mean black, I, but I'm then gonna, it's grayscale, and I'm not a big fan of grayscale. Well, scale. you can, I mean, you can eliminate white and black out of that. If, if we're talking about if we're talking about shades, well, right, well then, white and black don't count. Yeah, right. because that's your value, right? So if you're talking about one color, but I can go all the way up to pure white and all the way down to pure black, pure black anywhere in that range. Um, I don't know. I, I. I'm going to default You're to... You're struggling here, buddy. Well, i got to think about it in my brain and talk at the same time and then make a final decision uh, that's uh, committed forever on the internet. So <laughs> I'm going to go with... And they're going to hold you to it. Use, trigger, Tony. I use Menoth White Base constantly mm -hmm. when I paint mm -hmm. as, as a mix. Um, actually, I would say Menoth White Highlight, but it's too bright. So bringing it back down to Menoth White Base gives me a little more color in it. Um, so I would think that, that anything on that color range through all the values so be able to to darken that down take it all the way up to white i could probably have a lot of fun with that i like i like things that are kind of uh kinda missing kinda a little bit of chroma yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of blown out a bit so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh man that's tough uh there there's a part of me that wants to say cold black I, right because it has green in it mm -hmm. and blue mm -hmm. and by by changing the tone of that, you're actually going to gain colors? Right. Now I want to steal Dallas's answer. Well, and see, Can we so go back in time? Was, well, so mine was either going to be Cold Black or Exile Blue. Exile Blue is really good, too. It's, it's so good. Now, the other one, like if you were going to go for something warmer, I lean towards Sanguine Base. Sanguine Base is the unsung hero. Such a good color. Of my paint pot collection 
Uh, I noticed how none green. of us like gave like traditional color values. Yes, like none of us just said know, green. Mm -hmm. We we like we specified, <laughs> and it's because as Dallas you know points out in a lot of his videos and stuff like that, a lot of the paints that we have they aren't just like a set color. They're well, they're uh, they're pretty intricate mix and when you that's why the two brush blend method works so well on them is yeah, because when under, you pull it out it's not just one color it just yeah. like you were saying just chromatic well it's the subtleties that make all the difference you know dallas has talked about um the using uh manoth white the difference between manoth white highlight and mm -hmm. sickly skin which at first glance very similar same value mm -hmm. range they're both very bright but mm -hmm. uh that difference in the yellow and green in each yep. of those makes uh, just makes it all yeah. different uh, there was a good question. Can you uh, roll that up for me? So Nevin asked, uh, do you ever mix metallics with non-metallics in the palette, like silver into blue or gold into brown? Uh, absolutely. Yup. 100%. Um, I'm a big fan of what's called true metallic metal, and I use a lot of semi-metallics. So I actually mix opaque paint mm -hmm. into my metallics, stuff like that. Try um, Hearthfire into Rule It Gold one day. If you have the um, Retribution Mark II book, there's uh, several really good um, tutorials on their steel, and that uses those. You add inks to the metals, mm -hmm. and you do stuff like that. Go down again, Tony. Yeah, there's the turquoise ink. Uh, okay, Danny Palafox. Danny Palafox says he took an early break at work to check out this live instead of after work. Danny drew that awesome P3 oh, the, the, Reaver the, Goblin yes. pancake picture. Did you not see that? I picture? have not seen oh, this yet. I shared it. I'm, I'm gonna Danny, it thank you for that picture. That was super awesome. It super he, motivated me. You drew me. A, a gobber with pistols um, today. Based off our conversation we had a couple weeks ago, or it was like a month ago, a month, two months ago, uh, we had a conversation about, the, remember the, the, the P3, the, the three gobbler Doom Reavers? Mm -hmm. uh, Patience, practice, and perseverance. And they had right. a mm -hmm. fell paintbrushes. Mm -hmm. Uh, he actually he drew, drew a picture of it. Wow. And they're standing on a big pile of wow. paint. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pull this up because it's dope. It's super. Okay, <clears throat> so I put some Beast Tide on all my leathers. Did you share it on Facebook or on the Twitters? Uh, I don't know. You can go up now so I can see the new, new comments. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, I'm leaning in and showing Tony here. I don't need a lot of this. I'm not going to fill a well at and all. And they're standing on pancakes. Oh, cool. And he's got, he's got like, Orgoth knives and forks. <laughs> 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 so everybody in the chat, convince Danny to, to share that image on Twitter again and, and post a link to, to where yeah. you can see it Man. because it's pretty great. He actually, like he actually drew it. So that yeah. it's, it's, it's concept it. arty. Like yeah. you well, can make that for, as yeah. a, a base. Yeah. You know, like Inktober, how like, you know, like there's, you know, like uh, write more November and stuff like that. Inktober is kind of the same thing, but you know, draw something every day. No, that's, dope. that's easily convertible into Mm -hmm. A base with miniatures. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd, mm -hmm. Nevin, I found it's better to mix metallics and the inks when applying. Otherwise, the metal breaks up too much and you just get random flex over. I don't, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Todd. I mean, because I, I definitely mix my metals right into opaque paints. Constantly. Uh, but maybe I might, be, I, I, might I, think, I think I might be missing something. But if we want to continue yeah. that conversation, please, please clarify and I will... Uh, but I mix I mix metallics into opaque paints all the time. It makes semi metallics. And then Kern asks, will there be a painting white video similar to the uh, one for painting black? And one of the best ones ever is the first couple of videos for uh, when he's painting the castigator. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. I mean, that's technically white, I guess. But I definitely have plans to do white. definitely like full on white and in different variations of white. I mean, we have many different variations of white just in the, the line, right? We have the, uh, you know, the protectorate of men off white scheme, which mm -hmm. is kind of a off white, you know, very, but it goes down into grays and greens in the shadows. Um, the uh, retribution white 
is you know a very much off white but it's it's totally different right it's more of an eggshell um goes down into some really beautiful blues and grays um so then there's like Rikers Iron is talking about doing his winter Kador in white. My Kador is in white. It's a totally different recipe than either of those. Um, and I can think of some other different white uh, paint jobs. So the, the, the chances are I've already have them on my list, but we make one video. We release one that just went away. We release one video a week. So I gotta, gotta do one at a time. So what I've just done, uh, I base coated all the leathers in, and this is pure base coat. I did not leave the Zenithal priming showing through, so I'm not really using the Zenithal priming. It's just on there. It looks really good on the screen. <clears throat> but I base coated it in Beast Hide, and then I just gave it a wet wash in Caspian Flesh Wash. And then once that dries, we're going to do something else with it. Seth, this is not a loot crate. This is the War Machine Weekend Convention exclusive model, the Pig Barrel Rider. Pig Barrel Rider, rolling through your town. Pig Barrel Rider, knock your house down. <laughs> Unless it's made out of a kid or colossal. Yeah, then you can't knock it down. Then they just move in. All right, so I'm going to mix Battlefield Brown and um, Thamar Black. And now I am going to utilize, yes, patience, practice, perseverance. You got to practice your patience so you can persevere through things. Um, so I'm going to use the, utilize the Zenithal priming a little bit here. And I'm going to wash over the fur with this mix of Thamar Black and Battlefield Brown. And by letting some of that zenithal priming show through, I get some nice uh, contrast on the little miniature. Do, do, do. Paint that on. Paint, paint, paint. Get your paint on. The true P3. Blair, you're absolutely right. Patience, practice, perseverance. I say it for a reason. Do not forget the silent P. There's technically the fourth P is silent in P3, and the fourth P is pancakes. Oh, so we gosh. got all quiet over here. We're trying yeah, to we're trying to find uh we we have something we want to talk about. You got oh you got something uh, that we want to, want to show about. off, but we're we're trying You're to get it. Link. Yeah, we're trying to looking for the link to put it up into the thing so everybody knows what the heck we're talking about. Man, there's gonna be a link going up tomorrow, isn't there, John? A really good one. Really good link going up tomorrow. All right, so this is just that Battlefield Brown Thamar over the fur. And um, he's got a little fur on his, uh, around his waist here. So I'm going to do that too. Just get that on there. And that gives a nice, also a nice dark contrast between the uh, light yellow skin and the lighter leathers. Especially when I go to highlight these leathers. When I go to highlight these leathers, the leather really pops out. And I will do another shade on the leather. Very quick shade. Very minimal, very subtle um, shade on those leathers as well. So, so the links that Tony was looking for that we that we finally found were to uh, a couple of t-shirts that just came out on Offworld Design's website that you had something to do with. I, d I did have something to do with off-world designs. Yeah. So did y'all just put the link up? I think Tony's working on it. All right. Rikers Iron. Uh, we tend to put all, all the con exclusives available on the store at every convention. So that is usually the way it goes. I do not have any information if that's the way it goes next weekend for Machine Weekend. But based off history, the answer is probably yes. 
all con exclusives will be available during each convention on the online store. Okay, off world designs, dude. Link, so links excited. are coming. Links are coming. Coming in. I don't know if everybody's seen these, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited for these shirts. I got uh, I got my t shirt last night. I ordered it. It's going to be here on Saturday, and I will be wearing it to War Machine weekend, and I'm very excited. I should be getting my shirt, and I'm going to be wearing mine at War Machine weekend. We're going to be matchy matched. We're totally going to. Well, I ordered two t shirts. Oh, fair enough. So if you haven't seen them, uh, we have some shirts on Off World Designs. Uh, Tony's putting up the link, and they are a Thagros shirt and a Fiora shirt. And in my personal opinion, they are the dopest shirts ever. <laughs> They're super cool. You've been talking about these for a while, too. This was, this was something that uh, – some designs that you uh, really wanted to make happen. Yeah, uh, a, a little idea came uh, – you know, there was a conversation down the studio, and we all got talking about it, and no one ran with it. So I just kind of picked it up Boom. and started coming up with designs. And now we got some shirts. And they are now shared. Now we got some shirts. Oh, they're so good. So what? T tell everyone what the uh, what the inspiration is behind these designs. Man, 80s rock and roll. Metal. Always have. <laughs> 80s da metal. Wait, Dallas, you I know. designed metal-inspired t-shirts? I know. I don't believe it. I know. It's ridiculous. Somebody should stop me. They're, they were really fun to make. Um, and if they're really popular, I'm just saying, they're really, if they're really popular, that'd be really cool. You know what I mean? The back of this Fiora shirt makes me giggle. The last location to be determined. Caspia. 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 TBD. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, come on. What what shirts do y'all want to see? Like, I know you're out there and you know you love those shirts. What would you like to see? Um, so I've seen a ton of comments on some of the Facebook posts already, and there's a couple of them that make me really happy. Like people are like, what would be more metal than a Lynch Lord Asphyxia shirt? I have a, I have, uh, yes, Travis, I do hit me up later and I'll tell you. Um, I have a couple ideas for a couple different shirts and, uh, Zane and I are working on one that just happens to be related to our Shakespearean undead and lich. <laughs> the other one that I want to see that I'm sure, yep, yep, someone else just threw it out there as well. Uh, Alex did. Uh, basically a Viking metal, but trolls. Yeah. Right? Volca. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I just designed that in my head. I just designed it in my head. We're ready to roll with it. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got a couple in my head, too. I forgot to paint this little whelp. Oops. Oh, dude, especially like a Borka uh, one, like kind of in the, you know, what is the name of the band that sings that song, Vodka? Is it Corpa Kalani or no? Scandinavian metal band. Mm -hmm. And they sing a song about vodka. And it just, it, them plus Borka equals win. Are some good ones coming in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mechanothrall, Iron Maiden style. That might be a little too on the nose. <laughs> Blair, I agree. A P3 shirt. I totally am wanting a P3 shirt. Uh, what about one that has text on the front? Patience, practice, perseverance. perseverance. And then on the back? Pancakes. pancakes. A picture of a stack of pancakes. Right. Or just the word pancakes. We've thrown that idea out before Haven't on we? this very stream. I'm stealing it from the ether. From 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 memory, your own my self. subconscious. Yeah. That's a that's that's been a shirt. That I've, means it sticks. That's that, been that's a shirt I've wanted for a long time. I don't know about this. There's this guy is. Matt Wilson just joined the chat. Uh oh. So paint real well. <laughs> <laughs> the boss is here. Tease it. <laughs> well, everyone knows that because Travis is here. That's already where we have to maintain the super high standards. <laughs> because Travis is here, we're maintaining standards. 
Yeah, he's he's like the the rules guru supreme. Rules guru. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one of the other things uh, that we've got going on this whole weekend is it's gun mage day which is why i'm kind of sad you don't have your gun mages with you oh, tony tony yeah. didn't bring his gun, sad, mages, no in. gun mages today yeah he's got some really dope gun mages that he's working on for company of iron yeah i'm gonna work real hard to have them at uh, war machine weekend so i can play some company of iron games yeah yeah brandon this is the this is the uh pig barrel rider convention exclusive for war machine weekend It'll be available at War Machine Weekend or on the private on store. On store.privateerpress.com. John has that memorized. <laughs> it's actually, I'm, it, I'm just an Android. It's a button that Tony like, pushes on the side and I go into marketing mode. I'm um, like, you go to the website. <laughs> little, little Android buddy. <laughs> little bloop. <laughs> you go um, to the website and you're just like, store at privateerpress.com. <laughs> it's like Alexa, but lower rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, there will be some news about Alexa pretty soon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, some of that stuff that we talked about at the keynote at Lock and Load. Mm -hmm. And there's some movement going on Ooh, there and some cool things fantastic. coming on their way. So, yes, uh, Devonian, as Alex just pointed out, the uh, pig barrel rider that Dallas is painting will be available at War Machine Weekend as well as our online store, store.privateerpress.com. Uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, weekend. So the weekend of November 5th. And he is a replacement for a Northkin Raider. So you can swap out any mm -hmm. or all of your 10-man unit of Northkin Raiders with this super dope guy. I'm going to be really sad if I do not see a full unit of Northkin Raiders. I, like I said, I really want to do it. But at the same time, I kind of want Steve the, Steve the Hexbolt to just stand alone. You know, be the Steve one guy making the entrance. Steve Hexbolt! <laughs> So I totally uh, was just painting some uh, Caspian flush wash over this barrel, and there just happened to be some coal black next mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. and I accidentally dabbed into that coal black, and I just shoved that on the shadow side. And you just went with it. Just went with it. Boom. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that. I'll stick it over there. Don't you usually say miniatures painting is kind of like jazz? I, I paint with jazz. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Painting miniatures is a fine art of correcting one's mistakes. But, so, uh, as but I was mentioning, so. uh, as we lead up to Company of Iron, uh, we've got the uh, Celebrating Gun Mage Day. We have a whole bunch of sales on the online store right now. And so if you head over to store.privateerpress.com, check those out. Those will be available throughout the weekend, so all the way through the 22nd. Yeah. Gun Mage Week. All right. That's a pretty good heavy wash. All right. So the skin is basically done. The tongue is basically done. The quills are basically done. The leathers are almost done. Uh, let's get this little whelp done. You got about nine-ish minutes. Nine? Mm-hmm. I think it's enough time to do a whelp and a sword. Maybe yeah. maybe the beginnings of the firebomb. Why do these go so quick? Because it's fun. I think we should take a vote. I think we should go two hours. <laughs> Just do an all dayer. I'm down. Maybe we maybe we can talk to one of the uh, one of the one of the folks that uh, do like streaming for charity and stuff like that, and see if there's something we can do. Because that like would a, actually be kind of dope. Like a streamathon? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Paintathon? Get your paint on a thon? Yup. <laughs> Travis said uh, he's so glad he got to watch the Company of Iron streams. Uh, he ran a demo of it on Tuesday and it was great. Hooked immediately. Running more tonight. Travis, where are you running those demos tonight? You should mention that in chat in case anyone's in your area. Yeah. Because I'm assuming it's up in Wisconsin. Wisconsin! All right, real quick. What are we painting? The um, is, your, is, your, is your squished pig done? He's not quite done, but he's got dry. Okay. Uh, firebomb. We, firebomb? Yeah, I wanna, firebomb? I want to see the flames coming off that firebomb. We want to do the flames? Yep, do it. Okay. All right, well, I got to get at least a base coat of 
metal on there first. Mm -hmm. Which metal are you going with? So um, I would pick pig iron, but I can't find my pig iron, so I'm going to take cold steel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a blob of I Famar use black. so much cold steel. <laughs> and some of this weird brown color that I made up earlier that I used on something. Dude, you know. it, it's such a good mid-tone when mixed with deathless metal. So using the deathless metal as the base coat and then mixing a little bit of cold steel in and then a little bit of radium platinum for the for the next step up. Oh, it looks so good on my Rissavos dudes. All right, so I'm going to paint this real quick on this firebomb because we need this on there first. That's a little too dark and that's okay. I'll just grab some cold steel. And wet blend that around the model. So because the uh, previous layer is still wet, when I mush these together, they blend together. Like magic. It's like art magic. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it has to mean anything other than art anything. magic. I think it's all in the tin, man. I'm just gonna put a little bit more of this dark color on this side and wet blend that together with that other color. And on the bottom side, wet blend that together with the other color. Back to the dark. I feel like if we were gonna do an all day streaming thing for some kind of charity, it would have to be like an arts charity, right? Or whatever. Like helping kids get art supplies or something like that. Like that, that, that seems right to me. Agatha says art magic equals color theory. Fair. All right. So that's good enough for this. Flames on the bomb. So now we're going to switch over to some Morrow White. And we're just going to paint that over the flame. That little squished whelp makes me so happy. <laughs> I love this model too much. <laughs> this guy's super adorable. He's so good. Who sculpted him, do you know? Brian Dugas. That was Dugas? Yep. Yep. He did a really good job. Yeah, super cool. Like, I was looking at some of the pieces, like, he's going to go together super easy. He looks great. Like, I can't wait to get mine. Bloop, 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 bloop. Where's my blow drawer? Travis blow threw out drawer. the idea of painting up, uh, of, you know, getting a group of us to paint up Company of Iron Armies to give away for, like, child's play. That's kind of a cool idea. Mm -hmm. We might have some friends over there. We maybe. We, we might know mm -hmm. a guy. Mm-hmm. Pair of guys. Is that like Paraguay? No. Oh. A, a set of dudes in this particular instance. Alex, yes, Brian Dugas is an amazing sculptor. And he a lot of the a lot of the Northkin stuff that that is uh, on the website right now that comes out next month is his stuff as well. Mm -hmm. He also sculpted one of my favorite miniatures, which is the uh, the Archangel. Mm. And I was lucky mm -hmm. enough that mm -hmm. I was uh, I was on staff here, so I got to see it as it was progressing, bit Kern, by bit. That is an amazing question. He asked what the cutoff for today's mini crate is, and it is today, sir. So if you want to make sure you get the Plaid Piper Award, subscribe today at mini-crate.com. Subscribe today, get your Plaid Piper. Subscribe today. The oh, you're gonna miss it. Comes to your house every month. The miniature shows up at uh, your house. Stefan, just for you, the next mini crate is the Geist. Wait. Of, oh, you can't say, can you? Yeah, I can. Oh, we I can. do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Christmas Geist. You lose cannon swinkles. Yep. Yep. Well, I can say it because the graphic's going to probably go up on the, on the okay. website later today. I'm sorry, what was it then? It is the the, Grice, the Geist of the Christmas Christ. yet to the come. Grist? The Geist, yeah. He's based off the Feral Geist. And I will tell you, the model is super dope. It is really cool. 
I am I am also super stoked for some of the others that are coming up that uh, that Matt and Mike teased in that uh, Insider a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. Like so, they showed off some concept art for the for the for the Geist as well as uh, Ashes to Ashlyn. So an Ashlyn delete uh, model that is that her is like super awesome. Oh my God, it's so cool. But it's her like rising at, at like a phoenix out of the ashes and like her full shiny armor with this cool phoenix thing going on in the background. It is so dope. Rise the phoenix with the flames coming off your backpack. Yeah. Um, Alex, there's definitely potential for something for Grimkin. I don't have anything that I know of on the schedule yet because if they tell me things, I tell everybody. Um, however, That's it's true. definitely not off the table. But since they just came out, it might be a little bit. I don't know. That's true. As soon as you're, you're told something, that's basically just saying. It's literally my job. It's just, go tell everyone. <laughs> you just love to share. It's not a yeah, bad thing. No, it's 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 how I do. If they tell me a thing's coming, then my job is literally to be as loud about it as possible. So don't tell me secrets. I don't believe in them. All right. I know we're supposed to be painting the blue flame. Because mm -hmm. my flames on my steel krill are blue. But I got to wait for that Marwai to dry. And I do not have my blow dryer in the studio. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it happen. That's and actually. And I'm just going to do this steel while we wait. So that's one thing we've never, we never talked about before. You use a blow dryer all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. I, yeah. I, for a bald man, I have four. <laughs> <laughs> I have four blow dryers. Stefan, I did see some uh, notice via Twitter that uh, some of the folks, some of our friends from Down Under, got their uh, got their swamp siren at least as of today, tomorrow their time because they're in the future. Yeah, the future of Australia hangs in the balance. Probably not, but I had to keep going. Once I start something, I have to go. Metal, 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 metal. And obviously, uh, you know, the follow-up to that, Stefan, is that is that shipping can be different to everywhere, even various states. Um, like we learned, with no quarter, including a uh, miniature in that one, meant that it got to various places at very, very various times. Um, so be a little bit patient. I'd say give it this week if you haven't seen your, seen your Swamp Siren yet. Uh, you should have tracking information in your email uh, that you used when you ordered it. So check your spam folder just in case. Um, and if you don't see that by the end of the week, then definitely be reaching out to us and we'll see what and we can do to help you track down. Office. Okay, so the white should be dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some arcane blue. What I'm going to do, make some arcane blue, mix it up with mixing medium. What you do, take it out, put it in the pot, bloop, bloop, bloop. It goes plop. Some mixing medium. Drip drap. Mix that up. And I'm going to make a really thin wash. Agatha, uh, there's there's a workaround I've seen for uh, when shipping goes across the border into Canada that you have to switch uh, which version of the tracking set you're using. I will see if I can find that and send it out via Twitter and Facebook. Same for you, Stefan. If I if I get a lead on the on the tracking info for Europe, I will get that out. Gage, is that a question for me? Gage asked if I could pick a model to get an alt for either mini crate or con exclusive. What would it be? Oh man, that's tough. So while you think about that, Nate asks, "Do you sing when you paint if no one is watching?" Uh, yes. That is one hundred percent accurate, and that white is not dry, but that's okay. We're just gonna warp that on there, anyways. Whatever it can mix, it's wet blending. If I could pick any model I ever wanted to to have an exclusive, what would I pick? I mean, I'm biased because mm -hmm. I like Zerkova. Oh, oh exclusive. yeah, dude. Exclusive Zerkova sounds awesome to Dallas. 
what what would you what would you envision her as as an alt? Uh, like figure skater Zerkova? No, no. <laughs> she's got that scythe. She put him on the uh, or sorry, blah, blah, you know what I meant. Oh no, I didn't say I had an idea. I just okay. So now I'm gonna take. Can y'all see this on the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's showing up. Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take this really thin arcane blue. I'm going to put that on the metal, and I'm going to blend that out. Create a little bit of that source light. And this is not perfect. This is not studio or d display quality. This is... And I'm just going to put a little bit out on his little fingers here. I would make Zerkova the lead singer of, like, a Scandinavian-style metal band. I know we already kind of got into that with, like, some of the North and stuff, but, like, uh, if anyone's ever heard of the band Jerv or uh, uh, or uh, Arch Enemy or, well, I guess she's Canadian, um, that would be dope. Like, just all rocked out. Sure. Other ones little, that come to mind are like in this moment and stuff Doom like Reaver that. Guys? Yeah, with their Doom Reaver dudes head banging and rocking out, like or giving bass and electric guitars. Little con exclusive Warcaster unit. Okay, so I put a little bit of blue up there. Mm -hmm. My gosh, I need my blow dryer. Put her in Nightwish, Stefan says. Yes, also. Yup. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and paint the eye while we wait. So I'm going to use Thamar Black. I'm blacking that in. And if I screw up like I just did, I'll just tidy it up. Tiny little detail. Okay, that's fine. So, grab a little bit of that base color back in there and go over that little tiny spot that my black got on. Rub says, so Alexia is finally going to be a full caster question mark. Is that what I heard? I haven't heard anything about that. And I would be uh, over the moon if that was the case, because <laughs> that's the first privateer press model I ever painted was Alexia to use in my Witchfire trilogy campaign. Okay, the eye is black. And then Blair asks Dallas, do you green stuff all your models before priming or brown, brown paper uh, putty? No. I don't think this guy got any. Yeah, no, he fit together stupid good. I don't think this guy got anything. All right, I got to wait for that fire to dry. So let's do something in between that. I know, I know. We're I pushing it. There. We're pushing it, I Kim. see you over there looking at your clocks, being all like, <laughs> art has a time limit. And I'm like, you can't time art. You're not my mom. So Stefan asks, on a scale of one to Pacific Rim, how awesome is the Dracodile? Uh, the Dracodile is super dope McFatty. It is uh, beyond the Pacific Rim scale. Like, at least by three times. I will be ordering one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Possibly yeah. two. Like, I don't currently have a Minions army. I'm going to get the Company of Iron Box, so I'll have some fare, right? But I am using that Dracodile in Company of Iron scenarios. Because me and a friend might want to team up against it. Yeah, that would be... Oh, my God. We, Josh and I talked about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We talked about uh, how it would be fun to build a, a scenario where you team up and mm -hmm. fight something like a Dracodile or... Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to speed paint him too. So it's all gonna be like dry brushes and washes. Well, and that's the thing about him is like he he he'll, he'll speed up paint or he'll speed paint up real nice with those techniques. 
So I'm just going to put some little highlights on this guy. When you do use putty on the models for like, you know, like if you're like, you know, like making a joint stick together better or something like that, like mm -hmm. Blair is asking, I assume you do that before you prime the model. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Uh, P3 aluminum putty is super good. It's nice and soft. Um, it gets really hard. You can actually shape it if you mm -hmm. were so inclined to design your own sword or whatever and needed to need to be able to it. file it down or, or use your hobby mm -hmm. knife on it. Yep. I'm just going to put some little highlights. At, at least, at least in my experience, it comes out like a, like a slightly harder than like our typical resin. So a little bit more solid yeah, and not as bendy. Yeah, it's very hard. But that's also why I like it, because I can get a really hard line shape out of it. Yeah, it's good for real hard lines. It's also good for just for general gap filling and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's just really good stuff. You can sculpt the whole damn miniature out of it if you were so inclined. Joris is late to the party and asking what model this is. So as we wrap up, I will remind people that this is the Pig Barrel Rider. He is the War Machine Weekend exclusive that will be available not this weekend, but the next weekend whether you're at War Machine Weekend or via store.privateerpress.com during the show. And as Mr. Dick James just pointed out, he is uh, an alt for, uh, he can replace any or all of your Northkin Raiders. I better see somebody with a full unit of this. I'm so tempted. You should do it. Any, Gauntlet Throne Challenge, do it! And any other parting thoughts, Dallas, as we get ready to add up? Oh my gosh, I want to do this fire, but the fire's wet. Uh... Talk us through it real fast. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're doing it. I'm going to grab some Meridius Blue. And I'm going to put some real quick shadows into the fire, starting at the tip. So you didn't even wet that down. You just went burp right into it. I did. Yup. What ifs? And I'm not doing a whole lot. It's just a very minimal meridius blue. This gives that fire a lot of punch. I just realized I've gone this whole hour without using my my paint swatches. Yeah, we haven't been telling people what colors. Well, he's been calling them out. Oh, yeah. Well, so I thought you did it on purpose just to keep the keep the keep the frame clean. <laughs> That's why I didn't say anything. I was like, oh, Tony's not doing the thing. No, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's super hardcore about what I he's was, doing. And I was paying attention. <laughs> well, realistically, people can just look at at Dallas's hand, yeah. and there is all the evidence. That's the, the pa colors. That's the palette right there. There it is. Those are the colors. <laughs> Got a question? Look at the hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to use some of that Meridius Blue. Just give some definition to the flames. Now. <gasps> <laughs> he sees us looking at our, at our, at our clock. I can see like you out of my out. peripheral vision staring at your clock. So I'm just like, guys, you're monsters. So I'm going to take Marl White Meridius Blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to do the fun part. I'm going to take... And put some little. There's a hair in my brush. Hey, your brush is made of hairs. Grizzly Adams did have a beard. I'm gonna put some little. Little tinks, little, little boop boops, little highlights on that metal. Maybe across the top of this. So you used a little bit of uh, OSL on this, on the flames on the. Bomb, yeah, right? but not a lot here, yeah. right? It's just, not, just a little bit. Just mm -hmm. a little. And it's not it's not perfect, right? It's not perfect, and that's okay. It does not matter. Just doing a little. And Alex, a little. there's a number of reasons for the time limit. Uh, one of them is because we also have you know, other, other, other parts of our job that we have to mm -hmm. do, uh, like getting ready for a war machine weekend and stuff like that. And then two, we got to eat sometime, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting to be lunchtime. Man, lunch is super. Get your lunch on. Yup. 
Okay, maybe a couple bigger dots. Maybe some over here in the shadows, because those look really good in the shadows. And Dallas Camp, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, new t-shirts are super awesome. They are super dope. Uh, remember to go check out offworlddesigns.com slash privateer dash Go check out our new t-shirts. War Machine Weekend is awesome. Come say hi to us at War Machine Weekend. Come Please do. Come find us and Play say games hi with us. us. Um, and PAX Unplugged. PAX Unplugged is awesome. Later in November. Uh, oh my gosh. You're right. PAX Unplugged right around the corner too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, remember patience, practice, and perseverance in pancakes. And course. we'll see you guys next time. Oh my gosh, we're closing out as a finish. We are finished. closing Bye. out as your pancakes. Bye guys. <laughs> Bye guys. Tell them to stop. Tell them to keep going. Tell them to keep going. Don't make me stop!